Hello there. Welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I'm working in my art journal, so get comfy and let's get crafty. This is the prompt card for the November 2023 Mission Inspiration Facebook Group Challenge. There are five words for inspiration and eight steps or ingredients to the recipe. And this is what I did. So to start with, I forgot to turn my camera on. <laughs> I turned it on, then the doorbell rang, and I went to answer the door, and then I forgot to turn it back on. <clears throat> so, I have a piece of mixed media paper here that is about five by eight and a half inches, and I have already layered it with um, paint. The first step is to add paint to the background. I've added a layer of this dark blue, I think it's chipped sapphire distress paint, and then I've gone over it with a layer of crackle medium. And then I heat set it. And I don't think you're supposed to do that. But I heat set it. It's a little bit tacky. So my plan now is to go over the top of this page with this um, pewter acrylic paint. It's got some mica in it. It's nice and shiny and bright. And hopefully heat setting the crackle medium did not undo its magic powers. So I'm going to go ahead with a paintbrush here and just smear that on. Because there's a crackle medium down there, we're not getting even coverage no matter what we try. So I'm not actually even trying. Um, my original plan was to put the blue down, the crackle, and the pewter, and then maybe do some more black. But to be fair, or to be honest rather, this whole page is not what I planned. Um, I had this idea of making this very um, mystical, nighttime, foresty thing. And then I realized I can't paint birch trees or any trees for the life of me. So I had to go with plan B. So now that I have that pewter, pewter, there we go, pewter paint on, I'm going to heat set that. And you can see how shiny and yummy this is. But yeah, none of that crackle is coming through. There's just, there's just nothing. <laughs> so then the plan became, um, well, this is good and dry, like I'm touching it. Nothing's coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer of crackle medium to the top of the pewter paint. Um, I'm doing a thicker layer this time. I think the thicker the layer, the better the crackles are, but I'm also not going to heat set it. I, um, Put, spread this out with my paintbrush and I made sure there were no giant glops of it anywhere. And then I put my brush in a pot of water and cleaned up my surface and walked away. And when I came back, it was a little bit tacky, but nothing terrible. So then I grabbed that um, dark blue, that ch chipped sapphire. And I've also got um, pumice stone, I think. Yeah, pumice stone. I'm going to add a little bit of that pumice stone as well. So I grabbed my um, paint and my paintbrush again, and this page is sliding all over my work surface. And um, I did need to get the paint a little wet to have it, um, to thin it out. Because we're working on many, many, many layers of paint on this paper now, um, it's not that it's soaking in, it's just, it's kind of dry. Um, it's, it's weird. It's weird. So I did add a little bit of water to it. Just dip my paintbrush in my water pot and I zoomed in so you can see it's already starting to crackle like all over the page. We're getting some crackles already. Um, so that's yay. Um, I do want to add some light to it. Um, so I grabbed that pumice stone and a smaller paintbrush and I, I still thought I was trying to create the illusion of trees. And then I was like, no, I, we're moving away from that. We're moving away from that. Um, I've even changed at this point, I've changed focal points because I realized that's just not, um, not something I have practiced well enough to do on this page today. And then I got too much paint on that left. So I grabbed a baby wipe, but I'm mopping some of it up and it still looks a little bit weird, but you won't notice when it's done. You won't notice. I am kind of thinning that out a little bit more and, and it does kind of just add um, a little bit of lightness. 
without covering up that crackle texture, which face it, at this point, I worked really hard to create. <laughs> We got layers and layers and layers of paint on this paper now. It's starting to feel a little bit more like a waxed fabric than paper. <laughs> but anyways, moving on. The second step is to add a focal collage element. So this is the element that I changed. Instead of having um, my original thought point, which I'm not going to tell you because I might try and figure that out for another um, art journal page. I found this hollow, or this tree with a hollow in this little sleeping fox and I changed my um, inspiration word from serenity to sleep and I'm going to add this um, sleeping fox to the hollow of this um, tree and then add it to my art journal page I'm using a matte medium a liquid matte medium I put a little bit of that medium on the back of the tree and the back of the fox, and then a little bit also on the front of my page, and that should prevent any wrinkling. I printed these images on a 24 pound copy paper, so a little thicker than average, but, or a little thicker than cheap. <laughs> Maybe average, but thicker than cheap. And I'm just putting a little bit more of that medium over the top to make sure that it is adhered properly but also non-porous because that's going to be important in one of our next steps. Um, I did get a little bit of the blue. Um, the blue paint picked up a little bit with that liquid or the um, matte medium. So I just took a baby wipe and wiped it off. Um, the third step is to create texture with 3D texture paste. So in my stash, I have this art extravaganza texture paste and it's texture paste. And it is, the color of it says white sand. Um, but I, and I've never used it on a project before this project. Um, I bought it after doing another project that required um, texture like sand. And um, I bought this after that project because I used, <laughs> I used seed beads and glue for that project. And it was a hot mess. <laughs> but I'm layering this down like snow. At the foot of this tree, um, I'm also going to put it um, in the crooks of the branches and on the top of that tree stump that has been, you know, how it's flat up top. I am at this point about 50% sure that this is going to dry back um, clear or nearly clear, especially because I've got those um, darker, shinier paints underneath it. And I just decided at this point that if it does dry back clear, I will add some white acrylic paint to it when I'm, when it's dry and, um, spoiler alert, it, that's what happened. It did dry black back almost clear, not quite. So before I photographed the final page, I went ahead with a stipple brush and added white acrylic paint everywhere that I added this texture paste to, and it made it white again. So now we have this look of snow and the next step is to um, use watercolor pencils or crayons. So I was not sure that a watercolor pencil would work on that texture paste. So I pulled out those water soluble pastels and a uh, aqua brush and I'm just using the black and then I'm going to pull out a brown in a minute here to create some drop shadows. I just wanted to um, enhance the look of nighttime. I made that the a hole in the tree a little bit darker. I added some shadows to the fox around his tail and his face just to kind of um, create a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Dimension. There we go. I'm having a little bit of, um, my brain's not really functioning real well today. <laughs> it's been a really busy week in our house. Our internet has been really spotty. Like it took six hours one day for one of my videos to upload. It was a mess. Anyway, step five, moving along. No pity parties here. Moving along. It is to use a stencil or two. I have this Diane Reevely um, kind of wacky star stencil. And I'm a little bit concerned about that texture paste not being dry. But I'm going to make it work. I have pulled out another one of those shimmer paints. This one is called Sunset Gold. And the brand of this paint is Jacquard, and it's called a Lumiere paint. 
It's a metallic acrylic paint, so it's got mica flakes or something in it to make it kind of shiny. And I am just taking a stippling brush and adding that gold paint through the stars on my stencil to, again, create that nod to nighttime. It's just, you know, I'm going with it. I'm making it work. And I will tell you, when I was done with this page, I was so pleased with how it turned out. Um, step six, way outside my comfort zone. It is to add a hand-lettered quote or phrase. Um, I do not love my handwriting. I write really fast and I don't space all of my letters the same. I don't make all my letters the same height because I'm writing so fast. But the prompt is hand lettered, so I'm going with it. Um, because of the, the crackle on the background of the page, I'm going to have to focus my quote on the glue down tree. So I pulled out a number 10 white jelly roll pen um, the number 10s write better than the number 8s, just so you know. They're a little bit thicker of a nib, so you don't get as fine of a line, but the ink comes out better. And my quote is, I am so good at sleeping, I can do it with my eyes shut. <laughs> and that is very ironic for me because it has probably been, well, my second to the youngest son turned 14 this month, and the last time I can remember sleeping through the night on a regular basis is when I was pregnant with him. So it's been a minute since I didn't wake up in the nighttime. So yeah, I don't sleep that well. <laughs> okay. Next step is to, um, make marks with a kitchen item. I, um, I had no plans for this. I, I brought in this throwaway fork from takeout and I pulled out that sunshine gold acrylic paint again. And I'm going to thin it down a little bit with some water. I'm going to use the tines on this fork to just add another nod to the stars. I'm going to put some dots in the background. Um, it's way too um, linear. Like there's four little lines right in a row. It, But I just didn't know what to do with it. I couldn't think of it. I thought about getting a straw but I don't have any throwaway straws in my house and I didn't want to put paint on a straw straw, um, a straw straw on a drinking straw. Um, I, I just went with the fork. It was in my kitchen. Yeah. It's not the best use of that step, but whatever. Um, step number eight is to include found objects. Um, I went through my stash of things and I found some star shaped confetti. So we're just going to add some more stars to this page. I didn't feel like buttons or um, some of those other old school, old, you know, flashback to the beginning days of card making or old scrapbooking supplies would really work on this page. It just wouldn't, I felt like it would inhibit the flow. So I pulled out the star confetti. I'm adding it to my page with Tombow Mono Multi Glue which will dry back clear. So I'm not worried about little pots of glue poking up from underneath those stars. I'm going to go ahead and sign my name and date the side of the page. And because that um, texture paste on the front is still a little wet, I'm going to put adhesive on the back of my recipe card. And then instead of flipping my page over, I'm just going to lift it up and kind of mush it down on that recipe card. Um, but the back is really messy, so probably at some point I will take that card off, put something else on the back, and then put the card back on. But here is a close-up picture of my art journal page. I'm really, I enjoyed how this turned out. I just, I liked the end product. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I have a couple of other videos here I think you will like. I have that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you did. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what's on your mind. Leave me a thumbs up and have a really fabulous day.